Friday the 13th Revisited, the remake that I made of the notoriously bad, and I mean really bad, version of Friday the 13th for the NES. Everybody knows about this game. Well, I would assume everyone knows about it. And of course, James, angry video game nerd himself, reviewed it way back in the day. But I mean, there's so much that I could say bad about it, but I think that he's covered it already in that video. So. It's just a matter of taking a really bad game and fixing everything that was wrong with it, which is of course what I do. But one of the things that I didn't expect was it to be one of the most popular games that I have recreated. Some of the top things that people say that they like about my remake the best is especially the jump scares that are put in the game. They, this game will actually scare you, which is funny. So the other thing that people love is how I've taken references from the actual movies and implemented them into the game itself. So you can see these Easter eggs everywhere. But back to the jump scares, one thing that was very classic about Friday the 13th movies and Jason is that there was always something smashing through a window, whether it would be him, whether there would be a dead body and what I did was I implemented those into the actual game itself or when Jason just either jumps out of a bush or through a window you don't know when he's gonna come at you but when he does it does it it, it flashes the screen it does that actual classic NES like jump scare music that was in the Nintendo version and I don't know sometimes it even gets me now things that I've excluded from the original that didn't make any sense was rescuing the children and that beeping noise that always went off and Jason was gonna kill another ca a counselor. It's just, it's really convoluted the original game of how it works. So I kind of demolished, I erased all of that and I just sort of just make, made, it, made it a basic survival game, so to speak. So in order to escape Crystal Lake, you have to find these various items to help you escape because they kind of block your path or they hinder your path in some way so in order to get by this wall of coffins you have to get the gas can and then you have to light all of the fireplaces because it does something it has to do with the curse of crystal lake i don't know but there are camp counselors that are in the game now that you can actually talk to and they'll give you little hints here and there and like i said i made it a classic actual if you want to call it side scroller game which makes sense so you do have free men you don't switch counselors like you did in the original one because that didn't make much sense there was no difference between really any of them slight differences if you could find them but they were mostly the same so i said why not just remain the same person through the whole game the same counselor who was through the game i think she's in part two i don't remember her name but i basically made the main character based off of her also in the original, it was very confusing and convoluted on how you navigated through the actual map. So I totally changed that. And now when you're on the map screen, you can just select what area that you wanna go to. And areas are more harder in certain parts of the map than they are in others. So you could go all the way to this part way over here on the map and you could discover, oh my God, the zombies and the enemies here are just way too difficult in that area. So depending on your skill, you might be able to get through it or maybe not. That's where the upgraded weapons come in because when you upgrade your weapons, which are usually scattered about or the way that I've pro made the game progress is that you get more powerful or weapons like the machete, for example, is a little bit more at the beginning parts down here near maybe the bottom. I don't want to give away too much, right? And then the zombies don't take as many hits with those more powerful weapons. And then you can progress to maybe another area you went to before that seemed too difficult for you at the time. Another thing that I put in was when you light the fireplaces, in order to know that that fireplace is already lit, and this is a funny, again, homage back to what James and Mike were saying in their video. They were actually putting little pieces of tape or they suggested putting little pieces of masking tape on the TV screen where the actual houses were, where you lit the fireplaces. And I said, well, why don't I just do that in the game? So I thought it was funny to actually put these little red pieces of tape. You can see these little X tape marks now over the actual cabins where you lit the fireplaces. <laughs> 
I also did away with the 3D sort of movement inside of the cabins because it looked horrible on the NES. And then sometimes you run into Jason and it would be like this weird, bizarre version of like punch out that was just really, really bad. And so I got rid of all that and I just made the cabins just a side scroller from left to right now makes sense. There's also more booby traps that are in the game. Some of them, again, are references to other Friday the 13th movies, like the lasso on the ground that if you touch it, it will hook you up in the air. Like I think that was on either, uh, I think that was on part two and other things in the game too, you may recognize, like I said, lots of Easter eggs in there. Sometimes you can see Jason peering through the window for a second just to kind of creep you out. And sometimes you can see him maybe in the background, but he doesn't exactly jump out at you right away. Just, there's too many things to actually say in the game that I put in that so many Easter eggs, maybe I even forgot even to mention any in this video. And the one last one, of course, is the game over screen, which I was debating changing, except it's because it was vulgar, but so many people said that they liked it because it's the actual ending that James suggested in his Friday the 13th video, and that I actually left that in. So I decided not to change it and just left it in. And so it's funny. So that's my remake of Friday the 13th revisited for the NES, making it better than ever. One of the more popular downloads that uh, I have in my collection, which is interesting because it's it's one of the more simplistic type of games, but I guess I just m made it really solid and made it really fun for everyone to play. And so if you want to get it and you want to give it a try, you know where to go. That's retrovideogames.store, my website. And if you want to see another cool remake that I did, just click up here in the corner or click over here and subscribe if you want to see more content like this. And, um, Watch out or Jason will get you. <laughs>